the Dallas Cowboys, like every other NFL team, have been putting in the work these past several days at the 2019 NFL Combine in Indianapolis to better familiarize themselves with this year's draft class ahead of the NFL Draft in April. This is the first opportunity a lot of these teams have had to get to know a lot of these prospects and which players they meet with could shine a light on their draft strategy. As far as the Dallas Cowboys go, which participants they decide to meet with could be telling as well, especially since they don't have a first-round draft pick this year. With that in mind, I thought it would be a good idea to keep an eye out for who they have reportedly met with. It may be nothing, but it also may give us an idea about what players and positions they may be targeting. Here are the players the Dallas Cowboys have met with at the NFL Combine so far, David Montgomery, RB, Iowa State, Travion Williams, RB, Texas A. Jogginson, Tay, Iowa, Dex Raymond, Tay, Utah State, Stanley Morgan Jr. W.R., Nebraska Dalton Risner, O.T., Kansas State Ethan Greenwich, O.T., Villanova Nate Davis, O.G., Charlotte Kinsley Kiki, D.T., Texas A. No one really knows right now whether or not his time in Dallas is officially over, but it doesn't hurt to look at younger and cheaper options available in the 2019 NFL Draft. The 2019 wide receiver draft class looks to be a pretty deep one, but today I wanted to take a look at the prospects who will more than likely be forced to strictly play out of this slot in the NFL. These are the traditional undersized and quick-footed WRs who would struggle on the outside due to their size in the NFL. Marquise Brown, Nicole Hardman, Hunter Renfro, Andy Isabella, Penny Hart, Greg Dorch, and Ryan Davis are the slot wide receivers who have stuck out to me so far in the 2019 draft class. Any one of them would be a good option to replace Cole Beasley with the Dallas Cowboys but each one of them is different in their own way. Here's how I currently have them ranked, current slot WR rankings Marquise Brown, 5 feet 11 inches, 175, Oklahoma Nicole Hardman, 5 feet 10 inches, 185, Georgia Hunter Renfro, 5 feet 10 inches, 175, Clemson Penny Hart, 5 feet 8 inches, 180, Georgia State Andy Isabella, 5 feet 8 inches, 186, UMass Greg Dorch, 5 feet 9 inches, 170, Wake Forest Ryan Davis, 5 feet 9 inches, 179, Auburn Here's how the top three rank in different categories. Root running Marquise Brown Hunter Renfro Penny Hart Renfro probably should have earned the top spot here considering he's currently the best root runner of the group, but Brown is right there on his heels and has the potential to become even better. He has a unique understanding of how to set up defenders and is explosive in and out of his cuts. Renfro however is more steady and wastes very little movement. Speed, athleticism, Marchese Brown, Michael Hardman, and Isabella. Judging these players based on speed is a little difficult. It could be argued that change of direction speed is more important than straight line speed, especially for slot receivers. I think Brown, Hardman, and Isabella are the unquestioned fastest slot WRs in the 2019 draft class, though, and should all should run in the 4.3 range at the NFL Combine. Versatility May Cole Hardman Penny Hart Greg Dorch Nearly all slot WRs in the NFL offers value on special teams. Hardman, Hart, and Dorch all have experience in the return game as punt on kick returners and are expected to carry that skill set over to the next level. Hardman has even been used defensively at Georgia, which is causing some NFL teams to look at him as a potential cornerback. Hands, ball skills Hunter Renfro Michael Hardman Ryan Davis Hunter Renfro is the obvious top choice here. He catches absolutely everything thrown his way and might have the best hands of any receiver in the entire 2019 draft class. Hardman and Davis both lose concentration at times causing them to drop a few passes, but they are both natural hand catchers. Ball carrier Marquise Brown Michael Hardman Penny Hart narrowing down the top three best slot WRs for this category wasn't easy. Nearly all of these prospects show dynamic traits after the catch but I decided to go with the three I thought had the best combination of speed and explosiveness with the ball their hands. 
Brown, Hardman, and Hart are all home run threats anytime they touch the ball. Blocking may call Hardman Penny Hart Ryan Davis as a general rule, slot receivers aren't the best blockers due to their lack of size and strength. Hardman's effort and filled out frame makes him the best blocker of the bunch though. He's coming from a system at Georgia that requires their WRs to do a lot of blocking and he shows the best ability to cut off defenders and keeps his feet moving on contact. The 2019 NFL Combine is upon us, and with the excitement of some sort of football being back also comes confusion for a lot of fans. Which drills matter? Which position groups do they matter for? How fast is fast? Do the Cowboys care about any of these drills in particular? The Combine, and the NFL Draft as a whole, can be a monster to decipher. Hell, it's tough for paid professionals to understand what they are looking at or should value most of the time. So, based on their tendencies in previous years, I have complied a list of what drills and measurements seem to matter most to the Dallas Cowboys for their current positions of need. This way you can all be informed viewers this weekend, and shoot down any ridiculous proclamations made on the broadcast. Wide receiver working on something for at inside the start C. Here's the height, weight, 40 time, and 3 cone for every WR doll has taken since 2010. This list was complied last year, but the numbers remain about the same. On average, Cowboys draftees at wide out run a 4.53 second 40 yard dash and a 3 cone just under 7 seconds. They also tend to be about 6 feet 0 inches tall, with 6 feet 2 inches being their ideal target, Des Bryant, 2010. In the third round last season the Cowboys took Michael Gallup, who fit this description to a t. Gallup measured in a 6 feet 1 inch 205 and ran a 4.5140 time and 6.953 cone. We could have seen his drafting coming from a mile away. Cedric Wilson was also right in line with the Cowboys' typical tendencies at 6 feet 2 inches, just shy of 200 pounds, a 40 time at 4.55, and a 6.893 cone time. The Cowboys haven't drafted a receiver who ran better than 4.5 during the Jason Garrett era. This seems impossible, but they may need to buck this trend if they want to find their quick slot receiver in this draft class. That quickness in the slot is typically about movement and shiftiness in a short area, however, which isn't as applicable to the 40 time. Tight end There isn't a ton of meaningful data to examine when it comes to the Cowboys drafting tight ends, but their selection of Dalton Schultz last year did point to some preferences. Dallas seemed to value Dalton Schultz's three-cone and broad jump scores, and you should pay attention to those two drills in particular, as Dallas does believe they are good indicators of explosiveness in a player. Outside of those you can see a pattern in who the Cowboys like at tight end based on these numbers. I'd consider these thresholds when taking a look at the tight end workouts this weekend at the NFL Combine. Defensive tackle building the Cowboys IDL board the way I built the WR board. Here's how some popular DL stack up the former Cowboys pick since 2011. Once again, this list was compiled last year, but the Cowboys did not draft an interior defensive lineman in the 2018 draft so this remains true. Honestly, the Cowboys don't seem to care about defensive tackles. They just about ignore it on draft day, and have only taken one within the first three rounds during the Garrett era. The one tackle they did draft had an excellent three-cone time by their limited standards, but the data set is too small to draw any real conclusions. Three-cone, broad jump, and 20-yard shuttle are the three workout side. Pay attention to when it comes to defensive tackles, though. Safety The Cowboys have done most of their safety drafting on day 3, but the targets indicated in this spreadsheet are still valuable when projecting who they could target at 58. Xavier Woods is the real indicator here. He's the lightest and shortest of the bunch, but his 40 time, 20 yard shuttle, 3 cone, and broad jump are all right in line with what the Cowboys tend to target. This says, to me, that the Cowboys can look past being undersized by their usual measurements if the player is explosive enough in those on-field drills. 
Woods passed the thresholds for the on-field drills with relative ease and is now one of the better defensive backs on the Cowboys roster. It's also important to note that the majority of the drafted safeties were considered strong safeties in the league, such as Frazier and Wilcox. These players would generally be heavier and bigger than someone like Xavier Woods, who plays in more of a free safety role. With the combine kicking off this week, it's a great time to get out my first mock draft of the season. Considering the Cowboys don't have a first-round pick, doing a traditional first-round mock really isn't valuable on this site. Instead, here is my first official try at a seven-round mock for the Cowboys 2019 NFL Draft. This was done using the Draft Network's Mock Draft Simulator, meaning that the fourth-round compensatory pick was not available for use. This is why there is only one fourth-round selection in this mock draft. 58th overall, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, S, Florida September 29, 2018, Starkville, MS, USA, Florida Gators defensive back Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, 23, reacts with teammates after defeating the Mississippi State Bulldogs at Davis Wade Stadium. Mandatory credit, Matt Bush USA Today Sports with their first selection in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Cowboys attempt to improve their secondary with Florida's Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Gardner Johnson played all over the field as a defensive back for the Gators in college, starting as a safety in 2017 but operating more in a nickel role in 2018. He is a versatile defensive weapon who can fill multiple roles, but can be used opposite Xavier Woods in this Cowboys defense. Gardner Johnson can play as a deep safety in single high, in split zone, in the slot in man coverage against tight ends, receivers, and even in the box due to his tackling ability and physicality. 90th overall, Andy Isabella, WR, UMass with their second selection the Cowboys fill arguably their biggest need on offense, getting a playmaking slot receiver with Andy Isabella. He likely will be available in the third round, but he would be a steal on my board if taken 90th overall. Though undersized, Isabella wins with his quickness, fast feet, and route running ability, and will be an immediate contributor as a receiving weapon underneath and over the middle. Isabella would be the perfect heir to Cole Beasley's throne, if the Cowboys do decide to move on from the veteran wide out. 122nd overall, Dalen Mack, IDL, Texas A. Mack wins with his explosiveness, leverage, and body control through contact. He would serve as a rotational defensive tackle from day one, offering solid run defense and upside as an interior pass rusher. 155th overall, Bryce Love, RB, Stanford The Cowboys could use a backup to Ezekiel Elliott who can effectively in his own blocking scheme and offer value as a pass catcher out of the backfield. In the fifth round here, they snag Stanford's Bryce Love and get exactly that. Love was a clear leader at Stanford, and has the mental toughness a coach like Jason Garrett will love. Not to mention he can be a real weapon when running wide zone. Obviously injuries are a concern for Bryce Love, but on day three he's worth a roll of the dice. 219th overall, Jalen Hurd, WR, Baylor Cowboys draft target, Baylor Bears WR Jalen Hurd with their final pick in the 2019 NFL Draft The Cowboys look for another offensive playmaker in Baylor's Jalen Hurd. Though he lacks experience as a receiver after his position change, Hurd is a 6 feet 4 inches 220 target who is dangerous after the catch. Most likely he'd be lost in the shuffle of the Cowboys' wideouts after already drafting Isabella and trading for Amari Cooper, but with his athletic profile and natural traits Hurd could be a steal late in the draft. 